Welcome to the Horror Hangout, the podcast where two bearded film fans watch the 50 best horror movies ever and then talk about them. My name is Luke Condor with a K version 2018. And I'm joined oh. by my regular co host, <clears throat> Mr. Ben Errington. I think I'm still version 2017 currently. I haven't had an upgrade. Are you buffering? Yet. I'm You're buffering. On, I'm wait- upgrading now. Yeah, I can see your loading well, bar. Oh, I don't know. Long loading bar. Oh, <laughs> it's very long. It's never yeah. going to end. <laughs> Cool, it's like a curly wordy. <laughs> okay, so uh, this is the show where we talk about um, the 50 best horror movies ever. Um, basically, Empire Magazine put a list together. Um, it's a pretty good list, and we're going through them. We're cracking on. We're on number 16 of the list, but before all that, let's have a little chat about other horror guff. So, did you see anything? Do anything? I saw, I saw some bad things. No, horrible. Uh, do you know what? I've really, I haven't really been on the horror hype since, um, since, since the Christmas episode where we consumed so much festive horror. horror. I, know, I kind of felt like yeah. I, I needed a break. I needed yeah. to chill out. I needed to watch Jurassic Park and Home Alone and yeah, we watched Home Alone <laughs> and, uh, and all the and all the classics. Yeah, a uh, Jumanji. So I watched all the family, all the family classics. Watched them, um, Star Wars again, and just you know, chilled. Chilled the hell out. Didn't get, have any fearful frights. Can't do it. You need, you need like a, an end of year break. What about Black Mirror? Did you not get a little terrified? Uh, yeah, yeah. I've seen, a, I've seen, a, I've only seen three episodes so far. Okay. Of the new, of the new season. How about you? I've seen four episodes. And the, okay. I think the first episode of the new season has been the best one so far. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. It's just it's, really, it, well, really good and really like, refreshing. Yeah, it's great. It took an idea that was in the Christmas special that I thought was really quite sinister and just elaborating on it yeah yeah i thought that was great um second episode was pretty good i didn't mind the third episode i thought the tech was good i'm not going to spoil anything um i thought yeah. the tech was good in the third episode but i think in terms of plot it was a bit far-fetched it's weird i feel like some of the tech stuff in this episode or maybe the plot i don't know, I don't know if it just feels like we're getting a little bit too because Black Mirror has always like been amazing to the point where it's like every episode is a little bit mind blowing. I feel like mm. we're getting a little bit normalized to it, a little bit too comfortable. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, it. I know what you mean. It just kind of felt like the, the tech was interesting, but I mean, it was probably the most flawed of any of the tech in yeah. any of the series. Where you're a bit like, really, what? What if this just happens? Yeah. And what if that yeah. just happens? And then I think the way they went with it was a bit like it's believable to de- to a degree, and then it just went, well, that would never happen. Yeah. This would never happen. People don't act like this. This isn't what happens. Yeah. I quite like the little of... sting on the ending, though. The, that was uh... kind of all right, but when you think yeah. about it, when you try and think of the logistics oh, of no, that... Oh, no, it doesn't make actual sense in the way that... Which is annoying as well, because Black Mirror always kind of made good sense with like, yeah. the logic in, in the world. I don't know. I'm still enjoying it anyway. There was just, always like kind of a lesson to be learned as well, I think, of each episode of Black Mirror, and I feel like yeah. there are definite lessons in the first two episodes, but the third... Well, so even I've got... the first one doesn't make that makes sense compared comparatively to the last few seasons of black mirror because the U- the uss canister one the technology of like cloning people like making like digital clones of people from a dna sample doesn't really hold up at all no well but, he's got a, but there's a magic box so we're just expected to yeah spoil spoiler sorry for, for well, I, I well mean, that's kind, kind of, of well, nah yeah, yeah. nah, nah. Yeah. I know. Okay, so um, just quickly then, so what else? I watched um, The Devil's Candy. I just watched that before the end of the year. Have you seen that? I don't know if I've seen that, no. It's like, these, uh, it's like a serial killer story with a little bit of a supernatural twist, and it's okay. got a lot of heavy metal in it. Like the, the family in it are like a metalhead family, and they, but they're really sweet, and the, the relationships are really good. It's, it's, it was surprisingly good. And then Is that, fair, Go was that fairly, re- fairly recent release? Last year, yeah, so it came out last year, yeah. Um, so <laughs> I played a game. Uh, someone said I need to play this game, and they said it was a horror game, and it's called Doki Doki Literature Club. Have you heard of it? Uh, is this a game where like people? No, I don't, I don't think so. No. Okay, so it's, it's called Doki Doki Literature Club, and it's like um, you go on the website. It's all very anime, cutesy um, girls of like uh, type. You know, school tops and stuff. Very much like uh, what you'd expect. <laughs> <School top. laughs> but yeah. like, um, Kat said, I asked Kat if she'd heard of it. She said, oh, like a hentai sort of game, which is a kind of like a pervy game. So kind of like lonely people on the internet sort of go and play these <laughs> these games. And then I was like, I don't think this is a horror game. I think someone's kind of like joking that it's a horror game. 
and um, downloaded it and started to play it. And it's like uh, the idea is that you're playing, you're playing a character who's gone to the literature society, and it's all it's full of all these girls, and you sort of flirt with different ones, and then you, the narr- you kind of turn the narrative to sort of who you will end up with, sort of thing. And I was like playing for an hour and a half, and I was like, this. <laughs> I was playing for an hour and a half. Like it's got to get like scary soon or something. <laughs> it really didn't. And then, um, and then suddenly, um, I don't know if this is a twist, but maybe it is. Maybe I shouldn't go into too much detail. Are you going to invest an hour and a half on this game? Probably not. Okay. I don't even know what it is. If I could see something of it, I might okay. do. But but if, if you listen to this and you want to like be surprised, then then stop listening. Like skip forward a bit. But so you play for an hour and a half, and then like gets to the point where it's like. I'm actually kind of invested in the in the story now, <laughs> invested in the characters. One of them commits suicide, and it's like, oh, that was <laughs> that was a bit of a like a unexpected twist. And um, so then you go to go back to the last save point because that's the end of the game. And you go, oh, I must have made a wrong decision or something. So I'll go back. You can't go back on the load; it's corrupted. So you have to start again. But when you start again, what's it, what's it called? Doki. Doki Doki Literature Club. But when you start again, the character who killed herself isn't there anymore. She just doesn't exist. And then really weird things start to happen. Like it gets more and more surreal, and like it turns like a meta horror like story, and um, like things start to glitch out and stuff. And, and you find out the game is sort of uh, one of the characters. <laughs> I don't want to spoil it. But one of the characters is sort of alive, basically, and they they want to, it to be just you and her. Uh, so they're like, a, and it's it's really really dodgy, um, but. It's, it was interesting. I'll tell you that <laughs> it's very interesting. How, how, did, how did you play this? Was this on, online? It's yeah? Free to play, so it's just you download. It's free to play, but obviously there's some. There's been some money spent on it. It's um. But how? how if you stumbled across that, because I was looking at some imagery now, how would you ever think that there was anything exactly, horror related? Yeah, exactly. To it, like, if no you're a child, you, you might. <laughs> I think it's. I think it's kind of. Um, it must have just been a word of mouth thing because I've seen it. I've seen articles now on like io Nine and, and Dig and. Kotaku, yeah. which are like this. Do you reckon, is do you reckon it's supposed to be like a horror thing, or do you reckon it is just a lovely game, and then they've just gone a bit off the grid at the end? No, because the tag it's full on <laughs> horror by the end of it. <laughs> the tagline is, "Will you write the way into her heart?" Yeah, so you have to write these poems, um, and then depending <laughs> on what you write in the poem, uh, yeah, uh, points you towards one of the girls that they, whichever one like likes the poem falls in love with you. I bet you're loving this. This is your dream. Well, <laughs> this is your dream come true. So this true. is weird. So I was like, really like, like when does the horror start? And then like about half an hour in it goes, well, what should I put in my poem? <laughs> start to get like really yeah. into the game. Cat, what, 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 i got to do another poem. Oh, God's sake. Please. That's, that's like the kind of mean spirit inside this, which is kind of funny in a way. Because the people who play these games are obviously like, I want to get in that girl's pants. I'm going to write. You know what I mean? And, uh, oh, I'm going to write such and, a good <laughs> poem that she's going to drop a pencil. <laughs> but then, but then, like, the twist in the game is like, no, she kills herself and everyone starts killing themselves. <laughs> mm. So, yes, um, it's a fun, interesting evening. A little bit intense. Yeah. But, you know, I might give it a little look. I might just have a look on YouTube and have a look at some of the bits and bobs. Yeah, that's probably... If you can find, like, an article, like, a YouTube um, playthrough that skips a lot of the... Yeah, it's probably the best way to do it. Yeah, Sounds but that's, uh, I definitely recommend it if you're up for a bit of an interesting evening. Uh, but um, yeah, always. Let's uh, crack on with the film, I guess. Today's oh. film is um, 1976's Carrie. Do you want to tell us a bit about it? It belongs to 1976. <laughs> uh, so Carrie is a 1976 American supernatural horror film based on Stephen King's 1974 novel of the same name. Um, the film was directed by Brian De Palma and, and with a screenplay by Lawrence D. Cohen. So, hmm. what's this? Um, hmm, interesting. So, <laughs> so, Carrie White, a shy, friendless teenage girl who is sheltered by a domineering religious mother, unleashes her telekinetic powers after being humiliated by her classmates at her senior prom. Yeah, sounds lovely. So, this is what uh, Empire Magazine had to say about it. Carrie was among the first films to utilise that most terrifying supernatural force, puberty. Puberty. Stephen King's novel recognised the trials of adolescence as ripe ground for horror and found a worthy suitor for his cinematic adaptation in director Brian De Palma, who brings the tale to life with sadistic relish and intelligent, daring camera work. Sissy Spacek, meanwhile, imbues Carrie with childlike innocence and genuine pathos, blotted only by mild bouts of, um, telekinetic murder. It's a testament to her range that Come that prom finale, you find yourself feeling simultaneously sympathetic and scared shitless. 
It's got um, that's a really good. That's one of the better write-ups by Empire. I think that was quite good. Um, I learned it. Ninety-three percent on Rotten Tomatoes, seven and a half on IMDb, and uh, we asked the Facebook group, and Andy popped in to say Carrie might have the best intense murder stare in the industry. Uh, yes, I think in I think. the industry of intense murder stares. Yeah, yeah, man. Intense. Are you? Uh, what's your initial thoughts on this one? Have you seen this before? Have you seen the remake? I've seen this before, but like Have years you got ago. Powers? Mm-hmm. I haven't seen the I haven't seen the remake. Um, I haven't got telekinetic powers. Although I think everyone at some point kind of thought they might do. It was a combination of watching too much, too many X Men cartoons, what me. Star Wars, X Men cartoons, and Matilda. Uh, where I was like, I can move that bloody thing along, or well, maybe I did it. Yeah, uh, it's like that <laughs> maybe Limmy, that Limmy sketch when I mean, he's got the clock. He's trying <laughs> right. to. Like, Take the time over. Yeah, I think we all do funny little things like that, don't we? All kind of yeah. like in our heads, we kind of go, "Well, maybe I've got oh, maybe I have got superpowers." Um, yeah, I've, I've, so I've seen the original. I haven't seen I haven't seen the remake because I think the oh my god, the remake looked kind of naff, mm. and I think it did get slated in reviews, did it not? It was Chloe Moretz, is that right? Yeah, um, it was okay. It was um, it it was sorry? it was um, pretty much like. I think it's pretty much note for note the same. It wasn't quite as charming as this one. It's a bit more horror. Or, like this one's got um, a bit more interesting tone. Like it's kind of a nice yeah. film in, in some places. Um, but that one was like full on horror all the way through, I believe. Uh, I just kind of found that a little bit boring because I was like, just watch the original. Like the original is so much better. Yeah. I mean, the original is is pretty great. I mean, it's got loads of interesting sort of like techni- interesting filming techniques like uh interesting cinematography like split screen stuff which i don't think you see yeah. very much yeah um and it, you know it's not really a ho- again it's another one of these films which is like it's not a it's not really a horror film it's just got elements towards the end which could which are essentially horror i mean there's only some yeah it's just like a just like a family drama and like a high school drama where loads of standard things happen where someone's getting bullied and yeah. do- domineering mother so it does feel like kind of like cookie cutter in that sort of a sense but then obviously he's got the Stephen King flavour with the old telekinesis which I've never really found telekinesis in any way shape or form t- uh, scary obviously if someone had telekinesis and they were crushing your head like a like a plum <laughs> yeah. it would be, it'll be, it'll be horrible but I don't know like in terms of like a in terms of like a horror theme, like somebody having these powers, and there's they a just... few that have it. Then like Scanners has it, that sort of uh, hurt you with my mind sort of thing. I think maybe it's like during the seventies when when the, like you know Project MK Ultra and CIA were like making superheroes. Yeah. It might have been a bit more scary to Americans. I don't know. Um, so it's interesting that you say like the the tone thing because I was like, why has it got this sort of like seventies documentary feel to it? I think it's because the novel, although I've not read it, is an epistolary novel, which is like. Uh, a series of articles from newspapers and magazines and stuff cut out. So I think it's oh, uh, I designed to sort of replicate that. But as I was watching yeah. that, I'm kind of re- re- like reminded of um, like documentaries of Woodstock and that sort of. It's the same sort of music. It's yeah. the same sort of. Um, it cuts from various different scenes quite haphazardly. But then I was like, by the end of it, I was like, oh, this is why it's scary though, because but that that twist, that like scary, the big thing at the end is like full on. I mean, it's such a field. it's such a build towards it, and you kind of yeah. know what's coming. So yeah. that is really good because the build kind of takes like a whole half of the film to get there. I mean, you got the, yeah, the first yeah. half setting up Carrie and her, her relationship with her mum, and how she's treated at school, and obviously all of her problems and puberty and all that stuff. But then the second half of the film is just a slow build towards the moment where Carrie snaps. Yeah, would you um, would you uh, class class that as a slow burn film? Because I was under, I was confused as what a slow burn film actually is until because someone recently said oh it's like a film that sizzles away like a fuse on a dynamite and then pops at the end so it gets really big at the end but I was like I thought a slow burn film was just all the way through do you know oh, what I mean? right, yeah. yeah I think I think you can kind of use that analogy for for both of those types of films I'd say a slow burn was something that definitely pops at the end and something that is kind of it on, on in one gear throughout i'd, I'd consider yeah. that both because okay. i think usually when, when i when i use it when i say something a slow burn i would usually mean a slow burn to a crescendo at the end that's what yeah. i'd usually think okay but at the same time if it if there wasn't that crescendo at the end i would probably still call something a slow burn so but it was like just it, no country for old men that's a for me yeah. i was like oh that's a slow oh, burn yeah. but it's just slow 
<laughs> yeah, that's really a slow, slow burn, slow. but that's got plenty. That's got plenty of moments which are like super tense and super. Yeah, yeah. like like loads loads of moments. So this this was sort of like the build to this because this the scene at the pro, the prom, which is essentially the fu- not the final scene, but obviously the the main set piece and the yeah that scene is long. You know what I mean? A lot happens in it. It takes a lot, and when things do kick off, again, a lot of time is spent with yeah, yeah. the characters and things kicking off. It's not just like, bang, here's something terrible happening. Yeah, It's kind of... It's really yeah. effective. Like, um, <coughs> so I, had, I was watching this. Um, it was over Christmas, actually. I think um, I had a couple of beers and I was watching it and I was like getting kind of like really into like the <laughs> the underdog Carrie White story. You know, yeah. like the sort of... Um, uh, what's that? Um, there's like a, there's a, there's a, there's a film where they get like an ugly girl and they dress her up and take her to the prom and... Um, it's got Freddie Prince like, Jr. in. It's one of those sort of um, yeah, yeah. It's, I was like it's... getting right into that into that story. I was like, oh, Carrie, uh, she's doing quite well. Just, it just makes you pro- <laughs> it makes you proper hate it makes you proper hate hate the uh, the characters involved in it yeah, like the back. Yeah, yeah. John Travolta. I had absolutely no idea he was in this. I don't know why I completely forgot he was in this. Yeah. And uh, he is a he's got a real shit eating grin. And it's uh, weird. He's not really in it for that much other than like two pretty important. See, yeah. Right, yeah he's not in it that much at all but he is yeah. he is definitely an important character interesting to see that like he was in this was he in i'm assuming he was in this before starting like fear and greece and everything that was like a little while after wasn't it a couple of years later uh yes you're the wrong person but um I would say oh, to, am yeah. i am i well i thought you were the i thought you were the man to ask when it came to old john travolta he's, he's, in, a, he's in a bit of trouble with the law lately isn't he as well oh, is he? johnny why done some bad stuff i think Let's not get into it. Okay. All right, All right. Luke. It's a touchy <laughs> subject. Yeah. So he was in Carrie in seventy six, yeah. Saturday, Night, Saturday Night Fever in seventy seven, and Greece in seventy eight. So this was well, like yeah, had a good few years then. Pre. This was like pre. Um, yeah. the, when his career was going to take off. So like he was just uh, yeah. He was just a face in the crowd. Yeah. Uh, Do you think if he ended so. that little run with um, the blood with Carrie, like it would have set people would have been like, I don't know about that guy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because yeah, they like he... ended on the other film. They're like, he's pretty good. Didn't know him about hey. the start. He's pouring blood on stuff, but um, yeah, I've come around to him. Did you notice the uh, the girl from RoboCop? Yep, yep. So I she's I didn't she's recognize the, like, her until this time. She's the head bully. Yeah, is that right? What's You're that? the head bully. Nancy Allen plays uh, Chris Harginson. Um, yeah, I didn't rec- I didn't recognize her until this time. I was like, hang on, because I think she was chewing bubble gum, and I was like. That's that because there's a scene in Robocop where she's, chew, where she's <laughs> yeah. popping bubble gum. I was like, that's I it. recognize that bubble gum <laughs> chewing popping yeah. scenario. Um, yeah. um, go on, uh, yeah, that, I don't think I was gonna say anything else. That's it, I'm done with the review. That's the podcast. <laughs> okay, okay so uh, the cast City Spacek plays Carrie quite amazingly. Um, I think maybe she might be one of the key components as to why this film works as well as it does. Because she looks yeah. like the girl that you knew who got bullied in school, like who's a little bit like socially inept. Um, not you specifically, but I just I have a few yeah avatars whereas, in my head like of that. Whereas like Chloe Moretz, um, yeah, Chloe Moretz at the time that came cool. out, yeah. she was like cool and quirky and uh, bit of an indie pretty, kid, sort of bit like, of an indie kid, yeah. attractive. It's a bit like her filling that role just doesn't kind of feel right because yeah. as the as the underdog, Sissy Spacek looks the part. And plays the part really well. That she's, yeah, yeah. And he's right. Yeah. He says, um, so it, there's times where Sissy kind of looks, you know, kind of nice, kind of pretty, and kind of beautiful. But then when she goes, when she flips, she's like scary, genuinely scary to look at. <laughs> like she yeah. has this kind of weird eye thing. She looks like she's having a bit of a yeah. She's episode. got quite a bit of an episode. She's got quite like a distinctive face. She's got like quite small features, but yeah. like. A large, but st- the small features, but still like quite a large, dot like prominent face. That sounds mean. I don't mean. I don't mean, I mean that. But you yeah. know, you know what I mean. She's like, yeah, she's got a very unique look, and I yeah. think that when she does turn it on, turns on the old uh, charm, turns on yeah. the old evil, evil stare. Well, you call it evil, but you know, she's pretty much. Yeah, she. It's understandable why she would be very angry. Right. Uh, Piper Laurie plays her mum, Margaret White. Uh, Amy Irving plays Sue Snell, who's like the. I think she starts off as one of the bully characters, but then sees the error of her ways and decides to help. I think Carrie. there's a few characters here who are like 
some of the bully characters kind of transcend and are kind of like on Carrie's side rooting yeah. for a bit, but other ones kind of just stay as motherfuckers, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, William Katz, he plays Tommy Ross. He's uh, um, the jock sort of guy, but he isn't like a knobber. He's the jock with a heart of gold. <laughs> That's exactly it, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, hair like Kevin Keegan. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's got wonderful hair. And I've got Kevin Keegan and this guy, John Travolta playing Billy Nolan, who's um, kind of oh. <laughs> kind of feel like he's the the regular Stephen King. More like uh, Billy No Mates. Am I right? He's got Am mates. I right? Oh, he's got the uh, the two mates. Oh who, yeah, uh... he has got two mates. He's got... <laughs> yeah. sorry, Billy. He's got two <laughs> mates who are like, come and have a beer with us, man. Yeah. It's like, there's some weird there's there's some weird stuff with John Travolta's character that we will get into, but Yeah. So the story starts um with them like the girls on the football field doing some sort of sports. Volleyball. Volleyball. Is it volleyball? Yeah, because I think the ball comes sort of over to her and she just misses it and they go yeah, I mean... God damn it, Carrie White, eat shit. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, what's the name from Robocop says, you eat shit. And I was like, oh, jeez, this is harsher than I remember. Yeah, um, yeah so uh, obviously all these people, Carrie's a bit of a ditz. Obviously, like people are kind of annoyed at her. Uh, but then she, they all go to the um, changing rooms. It's all in slow motion with some weird 70s funky How are they supposed music. to be? Because, I mean, there's like gratuitous, yeah. like Boobies. high school student Too many nudity. Nipples. Too many nipples like, for a high school film, yeah. Too many nipples and bush <laughs> Like the world yeah. is ne- like like I've never seen before in my life. Yeah, I mean yeah. it was it, it was intense. I mean I wasn't sure what to make of these opening credits because there was a lot of slow mo showering, nudity, running about, boobage, yeah. bush, and like soaping of bodies. And I was a bit like, you know, when oh, you're watching yeah, a part- the intro bit in slow motion, it has loads of Carrie just showering, s- sudding, rubbing her legs, like sudding. Is that the right word? But, but maybe, stuff. but maybe what it's trying to do is it's Lavering. trying to like. <laughs> There's lots of lathering. You know when yeah. you're watching a film sometimes and yeah. you think, I'm watching a completely innocent film, yeah. but then a, a part starts in this film where you're like, oh no, if someone walks in right now, <laughs> they're, they're just going to be like, <laughs> I know what's exactly going you on? <laughs> or like you're watching a film and you've got it on quite loud and suddenly there's quite sexual noises. Yeah. Even if it's not a sexual scene. But then like, you feel a little bit like, turn the volume down a bit. Cat, Cat pointed out that nearly every TV show now has about 20 sex scenes. Like, there's so much sex on TV. Not enough, mate. Not enough. <laughs> Eddie Moore and he'd be Pornhub. Like, there's just so, there's just far too much now. Um, okay, so Carrie's lather, Carrie, la- Carrie lathers herself up, and then uh, <laughs> then she starts to like bleed, and from her she gets first period. She's looking around, kind of panicked, goes all crazy. Um, Help then, me! I'm bleeding. Yeah. Obviously, her mum's not told her about the old period, so she's uh, panicking, thinking um, she's gonna die. Yeah. Uh, so she goes to. I think she even puts her hands on one of the one of the girls. Yeah, like, she does. Colors. Yeah. She so rubs her like of... period blood covered hands yeah. all over all over people. It's no wonder they tell her to eat shit. Yeah. She's a <laughs> she's a nuisance. They start throwing oh, God. Uh, tampons at her. Uh, yeah. And say, so they keep saying like, plug it up. Start chanting, plug it up. I get um, thinking, what a waste. What a waste, yeah. yeah. yeah we're just like the free, probably supplied by the school, I guess. Yeah, but they do that. They throw sanitary towels at her as well, and I think, what a waste. Yeah. There are some communities, even in this day and age, where sanitary towels and tampons are hard to come by. Yeah. This is not a good, this is not a good example to set in 1970s, <laughs> 1970s <laughs> uh, puberty... I don't know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of train of thought. T- um, talking, about, talking about periods is it doesn't come naturally to me. Yeah, I can tell. Me neither. Um, I'll get Kat down later. She can explain it all. Um, okay, so they're, yeah. they're throwing, throwing tampons at her. And they're saying, plug it up, plug it up. Um, she gets freaked out. And then a light bulb suddenly like pops uh, above the above the shower. Miss Collins, the teacher, comes in. Does she punch one of the students yet? I feel like she punches I think, a lot I of think students. She, yeah, there's a lot of punching the students, but I don't think she does it yet. I think she pushes some people out of the way, and then she slaps Carrie in the face to try, oh, to try yeah. and calm her down. Yeah, yeah. And she like consoles her and basically tells her what menstruation is. Come on, don't you know what menstruation is? I mean, come on. There's Google. They didn't have Google back then. Google. Yeah. 
They didn't, exactly. You had to find out through word of mouth. Can you remember <laughs> when you were like, who is that guy in that film? And then you just had to accept that you would never know. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, you did. And you asked everybody you knew, who was that guy and that thing and that other thing? You know? What else has he been in? I'd like to see more of what he's in. Yeah. Tough. Tough. So you can't. You will have to let it happen or not. Like, you have to let it fly free and it will come back. Yeah. Or it won't. <laughs> boomerang. Yeah. Like boomerang. Now, I'm, now we've got like all this information right, right there at our fingertips. I've got no, I've got no idea what to do with it, mate. Too much, if anything. Too much. Yeah. Um. So what happens next? So she goes home to carry Miss Collins. I think. Did she ever go at him yet, or is this a bit later on? Um. I think. I think Miss Collins and Carrie are in like the school principal's office for a bit, and then right. the school yeah. principal keeps calling her Cassie. What a dick and move. Ca- yeah. Carrie becomes more and more like agitated, and then eventually she just goes, "I'll flip this bloody ashtray off the table with my mind." Cause I'm... <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then she does that, yeah. and uh, no one says anything because they're like seventies weird stuff. They just go, "That was a weird thing to happen." Yeah. Oh well. If they could Google it, they'd be like, "Someone is telekinetic in this, <laughs> in this yeah. circle here." But no, they didn't. So they just sort of let it off. Um, yeah. <laughs> she goes home as well, and there's a. A kid who, on a bike, who shouts something at her. And she does some telekinetic kung fu he on says, him as well. He says, "You slag!" and she just goes, does... "Can I have it?" and flips, <laughs> and flips his bike. <laughs> and he looks at her like, "What have you done to me? What have you done?" Is that really? I, I don't remember. Uh, I don't remember the, uh, the like the. Mate, I've made most of that up. <laughs> <laughs> but... uh, I'd like to see like an English, Northern English remake of this. What have you bloody done? <laughs> you yeah. Cassie, you dirty, rotten bastard. <laughs> be like uh, Kez, but it'd be called like Cassie. <laughs> Kez. <laughs> Kez. Maybe she had a little Kez on her. Yeah. <laughs> so she goes to see her mum. Uh, her mum's like uh, overly religious. <laughs> I don't know if you could say that. Like really oh. overly religious, but fanatically like religious. Fanatically, yeah. She's just no help. She's just like, oh, blood. It's like you could say anything to her, and she'd be like, "That's a sin. You yeah. that's happened because of sinful fault." The devil. Uh, <laughs> the devil's inside you. Yeah. Get it out. Periods. Oh, the devil. <laughs> She's like the, the girl devil. from uh, the mum from Waterboy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I'm like, what? So you never had a period, did you, mum? That's what you're saying. You're saying you never had a period because you're so oh, so holy. Jesus. No, she never did. Cassie could literally say anything. Cassie could go, oh, I've got a bit of a tummy ache. It's the devil inside you trying to get it out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. like, what? How would she reconcile that she's had a period? Maybe she never did. She, maybe she never did. Maybe, yeah, that's the thing that happens. Maybe she was so stressed that she didn't have a period. Oh, I read recently that, um, this is going to be a tangent, <laughs> uh, that soldiers in the North Korean army, obviously female soldiers, I was stopped menstruating due to the like the rigorous training they go through, like in in the army. Interesting. Their menstruation has just gone. Fuck this, mate. Yeah. How about fuck that for a laugh? There's been times where I've uh, uh, been running, doing like a lot of running, and I've uh, peed peed a bit of blood, which is uh, isn't as uh, alarming as it sounds. God, I wonder just... what you're gonna say then. I really <laughs> wonder what you really wonder what you're gonna say. <laughs> Did you ever see that episode of South Park where? They all wanted to have a period because they thought that's what everyone did when, <laughs> yeah, <I think laughs> when so. they hit puberty. And then Kenny actually has a period. <laughs> yeah. And they get like pubes at one point and stick, like, stick them all over their faces. <laughs> I don't know, Classic. Remember. And they turn out... I was, like probably, I, was probably of, like, uh, going, I was probably going through puberty when I first yeah, started getting to the South Park. I was very confused. <laughs> for... Yeah. Huh? You find out oh, some, like, some sort of anus bleeding disease or something that they're all having. Oh, no. <laughs> and they That's all die. T- yeah, yeah. Oh. Okay. Well. Um, so, uh, so she puts Carrie, her mum's like, this is the devil, so you've got to get in the cupboard. And I was like, yep. wow, this is a lot like Matilda because they've got like uh, the yeah. choker room. Um, Chokey. Chokey. Is that what it's called? It's like the Chokey thing they put or her choker. In. Not um, sure. Telekinetic put, yeah. powers. Girl. Yeah. Girl. Young girl. Um, period. No. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they put her in the prayer closet yeah. and she got to pray for forgiveness. Yeah. And there's a weird little, there's a weird little like um, statue type thing of a 
like is it Jesus? It's Jesus, but the eyes are painted a little bit too big and a little too flat. So it's like uh, they, it look... they look like they're glowing. The eyes. Oh, maybe they are, but um, they looked a little bit too like you could see too much white, and he said like a little blue uh, pupils. So... I like it. You're <laughs> critiquing the statue. <laughs> Well, the f- what you've done wrong there is you painted the eyes wrong. I mean, the hair is just totally not realistic. The hairline's all over the place. <laughs> you sound like that um, Lloyd Grossman. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I like him. He does some good sources. Yeah, he does, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So whilst she's at home or something, uh, Carrie's um, teacher has a go at all of the girls who... Uh, threw the tampons at her and she was like that was a really shitty thing you did um, you should feel bad about it and then she make them do the crazy there's like a little crazy exercise montage yeah there's some weird stuff in this the montage like the soundtrack goes real left field occasionally there's a real funky weird jaunty soundtrack yeah where it's like it's a bit like <laughs> yeah it's almost like too ridiculous what they're doing all this and they're like doing Obviously, the press ups and stuff in time with the uh yeah, I was impressed by that. <laughs> do it, a press up, and then we we're gonna do the squat thrust, and then we're doing jumping jacks. <laughs> it was like that, but obviously, yeah. then eventually, they all had, one of them had enough. The uh, what's her name? Uh, Chris. Chris. I, I want to say what's her name? From yeah. Robocop. Chris. So she's like the one from Robocop. So she's like the uh, the leader of the gang, the one who's obviously the most mean to, to carry. And she basically gets told if she doesn't do this exercise, this detention. She's going to get banned from the prom. Yeah. You will not come to the prom. And she tries to get all her friends along with her, but they kind of just go, you're on your own, sister. Yeah. And she, uh, and she uh, stomps off. So obviously, that's it. So then we have like the two the split here. So we've got um, Sue and uh, Timothy, whatever his name was, Tommy. Um, Tommy! Yeah, like the, the, I don't know if they're a couple, but they're kind of, they know each other. They're kind of pals or something. Um, How, like, I, know, I know this is sorry, sorry. I'm interrupting your interrupting your point here. I know this is a thing because obviously everyone who's in Greece is supposed to be from high school, but they're all like in their thirties. But this is the same with this. There are people in this film who are playing like high school kids who are clearly like <laughs> thirty five years old. Well, I'm, so I... I'm not sure if that's true, but Tommy has got haunted eyes, <laughs> like he's seen some shit. He's yeah, been around for yeah. a long time. He's a vampire. Well, so I. As I was sort of looking around at the actors, I tend to do this when I'm putting my notes together. I go, I wonder what else they've been in recently. And I go, how come they're like, how can they be 61 or something? And then I realised that they were all like 25, 26 when they, yeah. when, with all the kids in this. So it's not so bad that you see the odd, odd boob. Odd boob. <laughs> if you were asked then, at, at 29 years old, if you were asked to play a high school boy, bloke, yeah. Could you do it? Me? No. Yeah. <laughs> what would you do? <laughs> I think there's a point at like um, tw- like 25. <laughs> you know that Carl Pilkerton thing when he says that Asian people yeah. age, age like a pair. Like they look they look good till they're like 50 and then they turn like really old the next day. <laughs> like <laughs> I feel like for for us white people, white males, like, there's like a, I think it's like 25 to 30. There's like a a proper aging process there. Everyone yeah. starts to lose that sort of innocence. <laughs> Maybe it's like that's because you drink a lot in that time. But I don't know. Innocence, you mean hair? <laughs> well, that's, that's of one aspect. Oh, my innocence is gone. I feel like, uh, like you get a few more wrinkles. You, um, yeah. You, I don't know. People start to get bellies. I chip my tooth a little bit more, like the other yeah. day. Yeah. That's not age, though. I mean, that's. That can happen anytime, wear, couldn't it? Wear and tear. Wear and tear. I see. You've just been eating too many um uh <laughs> glass. <laughs> I even think of glass. <laughs> yeah. 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 I told you, when you have a lovely drink, don't bite down. I always do a thing where you go to drink with a beer bottle, and I don't know if it's because you're a little bit tipsy or something, you go straight for the tooth. Why yeah. is why is my mouth not open? Well that's how I chip my tooth there, because basically mm. I was drinking a beer bottle, having a lovely bottle of grosh taking a lovely sip and my friend was telling a really over the top story with his hands and stuff and he's going yeah just yeah yeah and then this happened like and then whoa this happened and he just like elbowed the bottle <laughs> into my mouth and I just went you fucking idiot <laughs> and recently I told him that and he was like oh did I and I was thinking you don't it don't even register with him but it's I've had to live with him <laughs> yeah yeah that's twat that's terrible <laughs> it's a terrible shame so um 
<laughs> I completely lost. Yeah, yeah. So, so Sue basically says to, to her boyfriend, yeah. Tommy, handsome and popular, and hair like yeah. Kevin Keegan. She basically says, "Ask Carrie to the prom instead of her to make up for the cruel actions." Which yeah. I kind of was a bit like, "That's a ruse, isn't it?" But I think from watching the film, it seems like Sue and Tommy are actually quite genuine with it. Is that right? Yeah, yeah I think so. Yeah, I don't think um, I think they genuinely Which is- care. Which is strange because I kind of thought that everyone was in on it. Do you know what I mean? I thought that like Chris and her boyfriend and Sue and Tommy were. It was all like a big. It was all. A, it was a long con. Well, but the, uh, I kind of saw it as like you had the two couples. You had John Travolta and her from Robocop. They were like the bad version. They were going to take this detention and, and lesson and chaotic and evil. Something. Exactly. They were the attack. They were the bad part of it. And then Tommy and Sue. 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 Um, we're like we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna help, and it was like neutral, just a... neutral good. Exactly, yeah. Um, but then, so um, they tried to get Carrie to go, and Carrie was like, "I'm definitely not. I'm not going for that." <laughs> like, I think she kind of smells trouble on the horizon. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you would, wouldn't you? I mean, she <laughs> she smells some trouble. I mean, she's obviously she's not really had many friends. She's not had a good high school uh, career. <laughs> she's not had, she's not a very good time at high school. Yeah. So she obviously... she's referring to it as a career, then that's probably one of the reasons why. She's yeah, everybody. there we go. That's it. Stephen, <laughs> oh, that's Stephen it. King said he based Carrie on um, two girls who were just like her. He knew from from schools growing up, and they were like overly religious. Um, they used to get picked on. Um, he said one of them once turned up after like a summer holiday, summer break. And she was like full of confidence. Suddenly, she had like a new dress, new um, like makeup on and stuff. She was like really happy. And he said all the bullies just it made them double down. They like went really to town on her. He said both of those girls are dead now. <laughs> they like died through like the various like um, uh, accidents. So I think one ended up with like uh, uh, like a, an abusive relationship, and she got killed. And Stephen King, like it's uh, Jesus, it's a horrible stories. story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, is it a nice, nice story of a good ending then? No, they're both, no, no. They're both dead. And then Jesus. they both died. So then, yeah, so what happens here? Uh, so Chris basically swearing vengeance, which is like, Chant, Carrie hasn't done anything wrong. Jesus. Yeah. She, she hasn't, she hasn't done any, literally just been, Interesting. someone's picked, it's someone's picked on her. It's the yeah. teacher's fault, yeah, for pushing her. So, like, because you don't punch a student. This is, this is what this is all about. This is why we don't have capital punishment anymore. Because, Students swear revenge on, yeah. uh, <laughs> on people who didn't punch you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> didn't punch them. Girls. Yeah. So she recruits old John Travolta, Billy, and goes, "Billy, you absolute mongoloid! Can't say that." Uh, he says, "Come on, <laughs> come on, help, help me out." You troglodytes. <laughs> troglodytes! You yeah. absolute specimen of a man! <laughs> you weapon! <laughs> you moron! Yeah. yeah. So she she gets him along like he's drink driving. Well, he's only having a sip. Uh, drink driving. She starts when she's talking about her prank on Carrie. When she starts thinking about it, she starts giving John Travolta Billy a little bit of fellatio. Oh yeah. I, I don't know yeah. if you. I don't know if you yeah. noticed this. I noticed this. Even though she was apparently performing the act of fellatio upon Billy, she was saying the name Carrie over and over again, seemingly without taking breath. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say she wasn't sucking him off at all. I think that might have been a different cut to the one I saw, because the one I saw ended with her. <laughs> it showed the blow. It showed the blowjob no, uh, no. up close in 3D. But I, but I remember them having like a long conversation, um, and then she went down on him to perform the operation, and then only <laughs> after like after they were kind of done, and like she was like right at the end, she was like, "I hate Carrie White," and then it cut to the next thing. It's like, it was like, it, it, um, me, it was like she was doing it. She went, Carrie White, I hate Carrie White. And he was like, God, yeah, it's all dirty to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's got some so, weird effect. <laughs> yeah. So obviously Billy's got like, he's got he's a nut box anyway because they go go to get some pigs from a nearby farm. Yeah. And he just like sledgehammers it to death. Yeah. Like Triple H. Just like, absolutely <laughs> sledgehammers it to death. Yeah. And, um, it, and then he, so he, and they he get gathers the up the blood. blood. Well, they don't, they don't, I don't know if they sort of reveal that he's got the bucket of blood yet, but we all know what's happening here. Um, so then, what, a weird, what a weird and specific prank to pull. Like, also, there's a lot of like uh, variables that would make it not really work. Like, she might not be standing there. <laughs> she yeah. might like not she might go. not be standing there. 
Did like yeah. Did there's so many she want to that... go to the thing exactly. She also, wa- she... why would she? Why would she assume she's going to go? Because Karen's the kind of person who wouldn't go. And why would they assume? Oh no, yeah, they rigged the votes. That bit makes sense. They rigged the votes, but then we're, again, we're meant to think that Sue and Tommy aren't in on it. But then they must be on on it because. That's kind of like the whole basis of the prank. I don't think that does work, though, because at the end, Sue... Well, we'll get to it in a minute, but Sue is, like, desperately trying to to, trying to stop... It's still the... weird, though, because how does Chris actually know that she's going? Well, that's the... Well, that's like a, you know, the last Jedi sort of... <laughs> like that's a... what they used to say back in 1976. <laughs> if this is a lesson of the last Jedi, yeah. um, just, you know, fill in the blanks yourself. You can argue, you can argue the point, but... Um... I think it's just one of those things. Yeah, I'm not going to. Yeah. Um, so we've got a bit of a, um, a montage here of people getting ready for the prom. There's like girls going, oh, have you heard? Thing he's taking, what's the name, to Carrie White to the prom. And there's a guy yeah. going, I don't like Texas, man. I just don't wear Texas. And then uh, he goes, he gets like a, one of those comical T-shirts. That's like a, yeah, which I didn't even realize existed back then. No. Well, was Maybe this is where he started. Century. Yeah, I don't know. Um and then they, they uh, she goes to the prom. She looks like very done up, very pretty. Um, and then Tommy seems well, to be bef- into, like he's well before. Well, before she goes to the prom, is her mum like is pretty much going to her? You will not go. Everyone will laugh at you. You're a fucking prick. You look <laughs> like shit. You stink. And then she obviously Carrie yeah. uses her telekinesis for yeah. um, a very. This is a very very mild form of te- telekinesis where you just gently push someone onto the bed yeah she could have done that with her hand but she, she did it with her telekin- telekinesis yeah. is even if her mum knows about her telekinesis is well yeah. she seemed well, the thing is she she makes a face like jesus what the hell happened and you think if she thinks periods are caused by the devil <laughs> and whatever else does she not think the telekinesis is like something she, yeah. she seems to be quite accepted of the telekinesis yeah oh you've got a bit of telekinesis have you Good on you. Probably some sort of weird mutation. No, it doesn't doesn't bring religion into that at all. Some, some no, weird... it doesn't. I mean, I'll get Professor X on the phone. Yeah. Well, uh, we'll get we'll get him round here. Hmm. He would have been with, with with Magneto at this point in the seventies. I wonder what the scientific papers say on telekinesis right now. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. She goes they say everything else. They say like... she's a witch. <laughs> okay. Um. So then we're starting to come to like the main sort of. Part of the film, like you said, like the the, the prom actually takes ages. There's a lot yeah. of it. They they seem to be getting on Carrie and, and Tommy. They dance, they kiss, um, they get voted to be the uh, uh, prom king and queen. But we realise that it's uh, it's you know set up by Chris and Sue. But like she seems happy, and everyone's like getting into, getting behind. Her. Everyone's like kind of clapping along to her. Um, and then we have this kind of weird scene where. Um, Sue has just come to see her. She's smiling along, clapping along. Miss Collins is all they're all they're happy for her, uh, for Carrie. And then you've got what's John Travolta and her from Robocop under the stairs, looking out, yep. uh, getting under ready. We've got like a single stri- piece of string. Um, and they hold they hold this like for ages. The yeah. bucket yeah. of blood is above Carrie's head, but they hold it for so long, like yeah. waiting for her to do a speech, waving and shit. And they hold it. No, not yet, not yet. And then when they eventually do it, it's like she's been on stage for like 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah. And um, Sue comes to try and stop them, but then Miss Collins is like, no, get away. You're evil. You're planning something. <laughs> she kicks her out of the thing. Again, that takes like five minutes, like, and Carrie's still on the stage. Um, and then they let the bucket go. The blood completely covers Carrie. The bucket then falls, slams on Tommy's head. I think kills Tommy. You find out later to- on that Tommy dies. Is this true? Yeah. No. Sue at the end says... Um, Tommy? Uh, exactly, yeah. So this... Because at this point, I was like really kind of... I knew what was hap- what was going to happen. But I was kind of like really sort of enjoying the moment and getting a little bit emotional into the sort of... The idea of everyone sort of getting behind Kerry. Um, and then... This is horrific because all like all the nice people... Yeah. die. All the nice people are bundled in with the nasty, the nasty people. Yeah. And they all get killed. Tommy, he's got such thick, uh, like luscious curls on his hair. Surely that would act as an appropriate cushion for that bucket land on his head. Yeah, yeah, you think so? Unless, yeah. unless a corner's just got him right on the crown. Right on the corner, corner on the crown. Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, I kind of imagined um, Harry Hill 
sort of just saying something humorous like this. <laughs> send, two, <laughs> send in a clip and you'll get £200. Um, and then... <laughs> well, I, well like you've been framed. <laughs> what I find really strange if you've been framed, right, is there are lots of things that happen in you've been framed where you're like, that person is dead. That person is what, you mean, dead. Like, the thing was or... so extreme that they must have died. I saw something the other day where someone was on like one of those little merry-go-round things, like the really fast ones, you know, like the, the, the thing, and it was going really fast, and he flew off about thirty feet. Probably not as much as that, but I thought he's Isn't dead. That the one with the motorbike. No, that not that one. I've seen that one. No. <laughs> he is dead. He's gone. What? What, what is with right? Yeah. Sorry, I'm no, going to talk about you've been framed now, right in the middle <laughs> of this podcast. You've been framed. There are videos from like the fucking. Sorry, from the, from like the 80s and 90s that are still getting shown. Do yeah. you just get paid £200 once, or do you get paid £200 for like every series? Or No, it'd just be a £200 one off, for the, probably for the lifetime, right? So the, All right. The, I don't know. This annoys me as well. Things that are on the human frame, which are subjectively funny. Someone being a bit silly, someone putting a face, someone doing something. You think, well, that might be funny to you, but you've been paid £200 now, and you're going to be thinking, oh, I'm hilarious, aren't I? Because... Someone was doing a dance. That's not funny. <laughs> wait, wait. So, do you mean that, like, you you fell, like, you pooed your pants or whatever, like, and then you're on TV and you think two hundred pounds that that pay <laughs> no. that pay me council tax this <laughs> month, so that's right. fine. And then, like, for, for the next like 30, 40 years, like, people are like, oh, you're that guy who pooed his pants on. <laughs> You've been framed. <laughs> <laughs> that's that would be that would be horrible. What I mean is like. When there's like an accident on you've been framed, someone falling over, or someone getting hit in the head with something, like that's mm. funny because that's just that's human beings find that naturally funny. People getting hurt, but not not killed. People getting hurt is funny, but <laughs> things which are like subjectively funny. So the person who's who's filmed it and sent it in thinks it's funny, like their yeah. like their dad doing a doing a funny little dance like that, you know, like on the on the music <laughs> montage. And I think, but <laughs> I don't want to see that. I don't find that funny because I don't no. know that. Like, and oh, you've been okay. paid two hundred pounds. Yeah. And some editor somewhere has gone, yeah, we'll pay that person £200, this video of someone's dad dancing. Yeah, but... It's just a fu- it's just fucking broken, man. The whole the whole human framed <laughs> Only thing to is you, broken. That clip obviously works for 50% of the country. They mm-hmm. they love it. Also, the canned laughter, like... That's got to go now, isn't it? Although it does kind of work. I used to kind of think back in the day there was a studio audience there. I honestly did. When like Jeremy Beadle used to pre- present it, I used to think there's a studio audience knocking about. I think there was a studio audience, wasn't there? I think there would have been at some point. I don't think England never did the canned laughter thing quite like those American sitcoms that did it. Yeah, we've gone into this too long. Yeah, but okay. Basically, Tommy <laughs> is is two hundred pound up. <laughs> <laughs> no, Tommy's dead. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> so this at this point carries like a force of nature. Um, she does this kind of. Uh, we get a split screen thing. She does this thing like it. Her eyes go too big for a human head, and like the music's like, what? What? And like uh, she gets the hose. She starts attacking people with the hose, Beetlejuice style. <laughs> yeah. um, she closes the doors. Gets like a, a bleacher to sort of slice her teacher in half. Poor old Mrs. Collins is gone. Fire starts up. Um, that girl well, yeah, looks like Bar from was... Twin Peaks. Twin Peaks. Uh, yeah. what's that thing we watched yeah, yeah I know what you mean Strange Things well, she gets thing. burned dead I recognise that woman as well um, yeah so obviously she was hallucinating before seeing people that she even that she was kind of alright with but she hallucinated that they were just laughing at her yeah. and she was covered in blood also the blood kind of like when it lands it covers like half her head or something and it cuts away and it cuts back and she's literally covered from yeah, head to yeah. toe it's, uh, it's that kind of blood that just kind of <laughs> Keeps on growing as well, I don't know. Just, get, just gets everywhere. Yeah, yeah. But well, she was rolling around in it at one point. But, uh, <laughs> and then, um, she's like a false nature, so good or bad, doesn't matter how you've been, she's like a bomb just gone off, and she kills all these people, goes home, oh yeah, and then Chris and John Travolta, <laughs> Robert yeah. Beltran and John Travolta are driving, and then he's trying and run her over, she does an X-Men, does, she goes Jean Grey on them. What is their problem, honestly? Trying to run her over? Jesus. Yeah. At that point, He's I going... think it might be like trying to save the world from a, a crazy telekinetic girl. I don't know. Yeah. Like, but surely you're, you're first... You put me in detention. Oh. 
Yeah. Because uh, your first thought when Carrie's doing all that, mm. doing it, you don't think it's her. You're thinking, oh no, a series of unfortunate events all happening one after another. Everybody yeah. is dying. You don't think Cassie, Cassie, oh no, I've called her Cassie. Kaz. <laughs> He's going to kill me. Oh God. Uh, Carrie, <laughs> K- K- Carrie, you don't think Carrie um, is doing it, obviously. It's not your first. When, when someone slips over, falls over in the street, you don't turn to your friend and go, was that did you? you? Did you just. <laughs> you did, didn't you? <laughs> you prick. It's a good point. It's a very good point. Um, yeah, so they obviously they just want to. They just want to. They're just like bullies to the, you know, nth degree. Um, but Carrie turns the head. Jean grazes them. They flip up on the car, and uh, she walks away. And it blows up behind her. She's like an action hero at that point. Leaving. Yep. I'm brute. Um, and she goes home. <laughs> The house, her mum's house, is like really serene. Like there's lots of like lovely, peaceful music. Um, there's candles everywhere, and I noticed. I don't know if you noticed. There's candles on the bed, like just on the fabric of the bed, just balanced up. Oh, that's, All right. that's asking for like a house fire. <laughs> um, and please then, give me a house fire, please, please. I put candles on the bed and everything. <laughs> her mum, her mum says, "Let's pray." I had sex once and didn't really want to he, I think your father kind of raped me and I, didn't, I was kind of enjoyed it and that was the sin and you were born of that sin so now I'm going to kill you because you are a sin child and she stabs Carrie in the back and Carrie um, yeah that was horrible Carrie does the the bit that reminded me a lot of Garth Marenghi's Dark Place where she throws the um, <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, oh, yeah. And cutlery at, at mum and she's kind of like uh, crucified on, on the door there. it's kind of like just a pin cushion in the, and we find out, I think it's the same pin configuration that the Jesus statue is in, uh, in the cupboard. Um, so anyway, the, <laughs> the house burns down because someone left a candle on the bed. Yeah. And then, <laughs> um, cut to many, uh, a little bit afterwards. Well, the house like crumbles into The house completely dust, crumbles, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ha- it was house nice crumbles house, like a, like a, so- it goes inwards like a souffle. Implodes, Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, someone shouted at it, and it's sort of like a cake just goes in. House. And then, um, <laughs> um, sometime after Carrie's death, Sue is the sole survivor of the prom massacre. Like, everyone's dead. Um, all these, all these people. I think that's one of like the, the tragic things about, about this film, because like, all these people, you get a sense that there's a real community of people, and they're excited about life, and they're going to go on after this prom and graduate and. You know, have families and jobs and stuff, and then they all die. <laughs> Everything's gone on them apart from Sue. Proper um, annoying, isn't it? Sue goes to visit the house, the, which looks kind of re- it's really surreal looking. Um, and then Carrie White's hand shoots up, and uh, um, that's how Grabs it ends. Her. Like a little. Um... And then she wakes from the nightmare. Ah! Interestingly, she doesn't actually kind of wake from it. It's still sort of happy like she keeps going going back in and out of it it's like a weird like she double dips double dips yeah and uh dude have you ready yeah, for there some we trivia? go you ready for some trivia? i am hell fudging yes number one friends brian de palma and george lucas held a joint audition for carrie's title role and star wars as princess leia that's weird but it sounds believable true well, it says it's true. I'm not sure how they did that. So did he have like various people and they were like, you'll be good for Leia. You'll be good for Carrie. But then quick, quick, they're... do Carrie, do Carrie. Don't do Leia. <laughs> now you do Leia. Now you do Carrie. Now do stop this, places. do this, do this. And you go, bro, go, bro. This, this. Do the eyes, do the eyes, do the eyes. Let's have a, put your hair in bun. Yeah. Go, 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 go. Kiss your go brother, bro. kiss your brother, kiss your brother. <laughs> kiss okay. your brother. And he got it mixed up and Carrie was kicked off. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, okay, number two. Carrie White is named after Stephen King's favourite type of bag. True or false? <laughs> <laughs> no, I reckon he's 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 a much bigger fan of like a canvas, canvas bag. Yeah, I'd say canvas. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a bit liberal sort of guy, isn't he? Um, yeah. I was thinking like a white white plastic carry bag. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, got, I, <laughs> I know. Wait, uh, <laughs> I got it. I did. I got it. I got it, mate. <laughs> when you got to explain your joke is when uh, the joke immediately dies. Yeah. Deflates. Um, okay, number three. <laughs> Amy Irving was initially cast as Carrie, but was demoted to the role of Sue Snell. Like oh, a friend. Imagine She's that. Like, demoted. sorry, you're not good enough for Carrie. You're going to play someone called Sue Snell. <laughs> 
well. I'm going to say true. Why not? Yeah, true. Um, so they screen tested Sissy Spacek afterwards, and we're like, I'm afraid this is uh, this is Carrie now. I'm afraid, even though it's perfect that your name's Sissy Spacek and you could have been playing Seuss now. Yeah. That would have been perfect, but yeah. unfortunately not. Sorry. Um, Amy, you're Seuss <laughs> now. Oh! Uh, number four. So, uh, oh yeah, so Sissy Spacek was put in a coffin and buried underground as per her request. So she was buried alive as per her request. True or false? Wait, wait, wait. Say again? Start again? Sissy Spacek was buried alive uh, in like a coffin and as part of her request. <laughs> she requested to be buried alive. When? No, I'm not telling you. I mean, that's just a thing. It's just a... What, just for a laugh? or For a film, for this film. Not buried alive forever, surely. No. Oh, uh, false? No, it's true. Oh. Uh, the hand coming out at the end was Sissy Space Oh, hand, and she requested to be to be the person buried alive for it. That's right. That just in case someone went, I recognise those knuckles. <laughs> oh, maybe she just kind of really wanted to do it. Just, uh, maybe she likes that kind of thing. I don't know. Okay, um, so number five, the last one. Stephen King has repeatedly stated that De Palma's cinematic adaptation of Carrie is a piece of shit compared to his book. True or false? True. No, it's false. He said it's false. better than his book. Ah, uh, <laughs> um, I get all. You know, I'm getting so confused. Yeah, but I always, there's, I only said that because there's loads of his. Yeah, I know what you well, mean. King works. He, really he's like. not a fan. He doesn't yeah. like The Shining, does he? No. Well, actually, he's a, he's a fan of most. Even like the shit ones, like he's like, he was loving a dark tower. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, well, how much no, you getting paid it. for this, Steve? <laughs> how much you getting paid to appear in these adverts and say a dark tower is really good? Yeah, well, he probably gets paid like massive royalties or something. He probably gets paid and he gets laid. Yeah, he is married. Okay, um, <laughs> so, <laughs> oh dear, sorry, bro. <laughs> Hello. Okay, what was that? A t- as a tiny miniature Luke Con- Condor trying to escape <laughs> escape from your body. Part of me. It was not me. It was. What's how's that bit go? It Part of me. It was not me. It was my food. It just popped out to say hello, and now it's, it's gone back down, down below. below. <laughs> okay. Uh, we need to rate the film. Was it rate good or was it rate bad? Was it rate good or were it rate bad? I think it's pretty. I mean, it's pretty, pretty good isn't it it's not like um it's not like the most terrifying horror film yeah. ever but in terms of like being a good film and like there's it's really tense and obviously doesn't it doesn't feel so original in today's sort of um in in today's with the stuff it sort of competes with today mm. but i think it's a it's a really good film great performance sissy spacek um i'll give it a b a b for bravo Bravo, Brazier, Bush. B Bra- for Bush. That's probably more um, B for boobs. I um I I thought it was really good. I, like I said, I got really emotional in it. And I was like, uh, oh Carrie during, No <laughs> During the during the shower during the shower sequence. Luke got really emotional. Are you alright, Luke? Yes, I just need a moment alone. <laughs> um I'm gonna give it an A minus. I thought oh. I really liked most everything about it. Um, almost everything as I'm saying I think I'm only going for a B I would give it higher if it, I genuinely find it more scary if I find it more terrifying there's and, something kind of tragic about it more than scary yeah before. exactly yeah. it feels like tragic it's not like it doesn't feel like a horror film it's Again, like it just... bullies caused a car crash like a bus a bush a bus fire a bus fire a bus crash that set on fire and everyone, all the kids died it, it yeah. feels more like a oh poor kids yeah yeah that's a weird analogy, but a good one. Yeah, they got trapped in a burning school bus building. Okay, uh, so <laughs> next week we are on to the top fifteen. Um, so we're getting on there now. We're doing quite well. Top fifteen next week is Polanski's Rosemary's Baby. Uh, well, whose baby is it, mate? Polanski's or Rosemary's? <laughs> Which one? I think the film could be classed as Polanski's Baby. Hey, yeah. um, how do you feel about watching films? by people who you know done 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 a done a bad thing done bad things uh i don't know like um i don't know what you mean like jeepers creepers 3 came out fairly recently didn't it and yeah he's a convicted 
he's a convicted Child rapist yeah. or something, isn't he? Yeah. And my mum watched. That, I don't know if that's completely Jeepers right. Cre- something about that. <laughs> yeah, my mum. Yeah. My mum watched that film and said it was awful. And I said, well, here's something to make you think it's even more awful. Yeah. The director is a convicted. See, it's the thing. Like, in it, how would someone like that still get work? It's weird, isn't it? Maybe it's like an independent. So, so he was convicted in 1988 of sexual misconduct with one of uh, an underage star of something, twelve-year-old boy. This, this is getting horrible. Okay. Uh, yeah, and so and, and, and also, also possession of like child pornography. So, mm-hmm. okay. I don't know the complete story with Roman Polanski. I do know that he had a terrible time at one point. Um, maybe think, we'll read up on yeah, the history before we start of Roman like Polanski. saying before we start saying <laughs> what an absolute genius legend. Yeah. He's my idol. Everything he's ever touched like to, turns to gold. When I grow up, I want to be the next Roman Polanski. <laughs> <laughs> We're laughing, but it's horrible. Yeah, it's horrible. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this show is brought to you by Hawk and Cleaver. Head over to Hawk and Cleaver.com and grab a free book. Become a patron over at patreon.com forward slash Hawk and Cleaver. Thanks to Kovach Kalman for our theme music. Thanks to ACAS for hosting the show. Thanks to the listeners. Remember to hit subscribe and give it a five star rating and review in iTunes. And thanks to the guys over in the Facebook group. That's Horror Hangout Board Advisors. And thanks to my co host, Ben, for being a real horror dude. Oh, what, me? Thank you. Yeah. Cheers, mate. Uh, I'll see you next time. Come cool. and see you later. Bye. Bye.